Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dam Issia Questions, uh, episode 423. Uh, each week we meet here to review the questions and answers given on the Dam Issia Questions uh, Facebook group uh, during last week. With us tonight we have uh, Micah Fisher Kirshner. Micah is uh, a Vice President of uh, Turn River Capital in, in the US of A. And uh, he's uh, also a, um, a resident of, um, well, almost Silicon Valley in the USA. Tim Kappa, looking very unhappy this morning. I, I don't know why. Um, <laughs> And Tim uh, is um, CEO of OnlineOwnership.com. He's also a Google product expert in the Google My Business community. He resides in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. And uh, Micah um, and Tim are accompanied by Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. He's... Uh, um, also a Google product expert in the AdSense community, and he resides in Wimbledon, the, uh, in, uh, a, an exalted suburb of London. All right, we have um, nine questions tonight. Um, um, oh, it's David Rosem won't be joining us tonight. He looks like he has a, a broken uh, ankle. Um, and uh, yeah, okay. All right, let's uh, have a look at our questions. This one, uh, number one, is from Deepak Kumar Pal. Um, and it's a question that's titled Can I rank fast with expired domains? I want to know more about expired slash deleted domains for search engine optimization purposes. Can I use an, an expired domain for SEO purposes? Uh, can I rank fast with expired domains? I need someone to give Deepak uh, the good news and the bad news. <laughs> this was a tactic back in the day. Um... Google has at least publicly stated that the use of expired domains um, no longer has the same impact. Um, that they, if the site is fully different from where it was before, they will essentially just reset um, and stop counting the old uh, backlinks for the new domain. So as a strategy, it is fairly dubious as of today. Thank you, Micah. Anybody want to add to that? Okay. And number two on our run list from Jessica Ann. And um, <clears throat> it's titled, How Would You Address This With Them? Um, Jessica goes on to say, Hi, I've just started a new company and I've asked our digital agency to provide a list of backlinks they have created over the last three months. Um, <clears throat> and all they have done is post our blog content on profiles they have created under our brand name uh, on blogger.com, tumblr.com, and wordpress.com, etc. And on what looks like uh, a hacked um, um, sites. Uh, is this just bad brackets? Um, uh, Black Hat uh, SEO, and uh, how would you address uh, this um, with them? Um, well, <clears throat> firstly, I would, you know, I'd want to see what kind of uh, agreement contract you had, you have, rather. Um, you know, <laughs> it's like, you know, if these guys, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind, if these, if these, if these guys are building Web 2.0, which are uh, really basic kind of stuff to to do uh, in that sense, 
um, they're, they're, they're not like they're sort of right at the bottom end of the kind of SEO market in that sense. Um, and, and which begs me to, to say like, what kind of, you know, I mean, what budget did you go with? What contract, um, what was the whole thing? Um, it sounds like they're the cheap end of the budget end of the scale here. If on the other hand, you, you know, you, you, you agreed for them to build you links, um, and you're paying them, you know, sort of top agency fees. Yeah then you've been taken for a ride. But if they budget guys and they said, yeah, they'll build your links, well, you kind of get what you pay for. They're not good. Um, yeah, they, they're not ideal. Thank you, Tim. All right. Um... Yeah, there was uh, that, this was a good question um it was uh, answered um well and um let's see tim as always uh, um looking after people on on, on our uh, um group on facebook yeah through the week and richard all right uh, saki and shadman asked question three on our run list um he said, as an agency, what should I opt for? He said, uh, okay, guys, so I have uh, two domains. One name has this cool artsy feel to it that feels like a brand name. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, Ruby Heights. The second name is a very technical name, but feels mundane as heck. Um, for instance, uh, SEO Raiders. As an agency, what should I opt for? Yeah, I like Amon's response, which is go go with the memorable brand. Go with something that has the personality. You don't need, you know, just it. Go with something that's going to inspire what you're trying to do, but doesn't l potentially limit you in your uh, areas of what you're working on. So you may be only doing, say, SEO of the day, but eventually you are expand out to doing paid or display or dev and creative work. And so better as a, um, a set brand uh, name than it is to have a the use of, of the phrase that you're only doing for now in, in the name of the company. Thank you, Micah. Anybody else? Okay. Um, this one is from Mehmet Yilmaz. Uh, selling, it's titled Selling Products for Canada. Um, oh, Micah, we're losing you. Okay. Um, look forward to seeing you next week, Matt. Take care. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Um, okay, Matt um, um, asked a question and he said, in fact, I have a question for you. My client uh, um, who operates in the U.S. market they started to sell their product to Canada. They created new URLs for Canada, but the contents are all the same. Uh, all details and titles and other tags are the same among them. They did not, did not use href link tags. Um, they uh, are separating them with the tag FBA underscore Canada and FBA underscore US. Uh, does this strategy affect our SEO badly? Do we have to use href lang tags in this situation? Thank you for your response in advance. Don't fight over it. 
Um, so they haven't even done French Canadian. They've just done English English. Uh, yeah, I mean, I got, is that even a, it's an HF lang for, I don't think there's an, it's an HF lang for English Canadian. Oh, yeah, yeah. E-N-C-A. Is it? Yeah, E-N slash C-A. Ah. Yeah, I would certainly do HF Lang. Um, e I mean, I'm not exactly sure what the situation is. What does it mean by selling products for Canada? Um, do they have a distribution network in Canada now? Um, I mean, because as far as I know, a lot of Canadians actually do buy things from the US, um, but I think they might have to pay fees and for certain things. Um, so is you know, if everything is absolutely the same, even the prices are in the US dollars, for example, then I don't see the point of creating a uh, creating another page of the same content for Canada because that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. And I'm not sure what FBA here stands for, but if it's fulfilled by Amazon, mm -hmm. for instance, and so there is, they are now selling uh, to the Canadian market from Canada. Then I think it's a different matter, but yeah. Um, and the other question is, does the um, <clears throat> do the prices change? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think without knowing the specifics, I think it's a bit difficult to say. But my immediate reaction is either forget about creating specific page for Canada because there's no point because you only have content um, denominated in US dollars for the US market and which but you also ship to Canada if Canadians come to your site buys the product then you're happy to ship to Canada that's fine I think or if you do have presence in Canada and the Canadian market's important then ensure that it's Prices are shown in Canadian dollars, not US dollars, Canadian dollars. Um, there are sort of few orthographic differences between Canadian English and American English. So make sure that you localize the copy and use HF lang, because then you have a specific page for Canada. Thank you, Mr. Tuggy. Is that how about it, guys? Uh, is, is this the uh, answer for, for uh, Mehmet? Sounds like it. Okay, let's move on to number five on our run list. It's titled My Secondary Site, sorry, Outranking My Primary Site. Um, it's from Samantha Lander and uh, she asks, uh, I have two dumb SEO questions. Thanks in advance for your responses. One, my company has one website it's trying to promote, um, but also owns multiple other websites that each have uh, extremely similar but not identical topical uh, content. Uh, all of these sites are competing with each other uh, on the search engine results pages. And our secondary sites are sometimes outranking our primary site for keywords that we're tracking. Uh, should we 301 redirect these pages to the relevant pages on our primary website, or should we just add anchor links to pages on the secondary pages that point to relevant pages on the primary site since they're already ranking well? I know that with a 301 redirect, it's not guaranteed that the link equity, etc., will be passed to the, to the new domain. 
Um, sorry about that. Um, let me see. Let's go back a bit. Uh, these sites were created uh, uh, before I started, and I'm not sure if it's fine to compete with ourselves in search engines um, as long as the user is getting a good experience. Uh, or if we're shooting ourselves in the foot by having multiple sites with similar content. Um, two, when publishing articles, would you prioritize one thorough piece that covers a bunch of specific subtopics under an um, umbrella topic? Uh, for example, where to buy tools um, or uh, several shorter but still useful um, articles. Um, each of which uh, covers a more specific keyword. For example, where to buy hammers. Thank you. <coughs> so, <clears throat> first off, you don't want to be 301 redirecting uh, something from another domain to that domain, like if that domain's still there. Um, you definitely don't want to be doing that. Um, why don't you sit down with your main, the actual main site and restructure it so that you can bring everything from all these other competing sites or your own brand competing things and bring them in to the main brand, right? Uh, if they're all competing. You know, some of them out there may not be, them may not be in fair dues, but ideally you want to, you know, um, and depends on how many they are, because then ultimately it could be too big. Um, uh, the site could be too big and unnavigable, or it just doesn't make sense from a user's perspective. Uh, or you could put them onto subdomains within the main. So then they're still within the same kind of brand. You can still have the same brand in. Obviously, the subdomain would have their own kind of navigation, but then they could still reach the next one or the following one. Um, so, I mean, ideally, you want to bring these things in, um, but uh, only if it makes sense, um, you know, to, to, to the brand itself. Um, in terms of content, you know, Th think about it logically look ideally you know if you're going to say where to buy tools tools are generic so yes you could have one way to buy tools but that would be your main plan right and yeah that 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 guide can be on site and then you add to it so where to buy a hammer so then where to buy the hammer you create the where to buy the hammer um um, uh, you know, uh, where to buy it, how to buy it, what to look for, how to size it, how to feel, the weight, what the job is. Like, you know, go to town on the guide. And then once you've created that and it's live, then it gets nested in your main how to, where to buy tools or how to buy tools. Then you decide, right, okay. Uh, and so this can be an ongoing building process. But you're all, you, you know, you're nesting it within there. So people land on that. How do I buy tools? Because they're just generic looking for that. And then, oh, oh I can navigate through. You know, you can, you can, you know, you can go to town and it can literally be um, bullet points um, if you want it. Uh, but you can go to town on these things, providing a nice little accordion, snippets, or, you know, whatever. Um, and, and that would be an entry point on buying tools. And of course, you've got the other ones. And as you build it out, you can add to it. You can add to it, and you can add to it. Um, you know, just you know, just start st start thinking about the user, um, and 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 how and how it's all going to work. Thank you, Tim. All right, um, let's move on to our next, which is uh, number six on our run list. Um, Benjamin Williams says something I'm always saying. He said, is this correct? Am I missing something? Um, he said, hey, Griff, I have a further dumb SEO question. 
I'm using Google Ads for keyword research and I'm based in North Wales, United Kingdom. Unfortunately, whereas England is broken down into cities slash towns and counties, um, for example, Cheshire, uh, in Wales, it only seems possible to search via uh, uh, towns and cities and not counties. What I'd really like to do is research search terms from all of North Wales, but from what I can see, it's not possible. It also doesn't seem to be possible to draw your own search area or to do a specific town um, plus five miles, for example. Is this correct? Am I missing something or is there an easier way to do this? Many thanks in advance. So, look, I, <coughs> you're not going to find things for, for smaller areas. Um, <coughs> and equally, you know, unless you're running ads, I mean, ads, you can actually, if you're running ads, you can segment them by an area. Um, but if you're looking at, in terms of co content creation, stuff like this, um, look at the larger area, look at the larger business itself, or you don't even need to look at an area, look at the larger business itself in that, in that sense. Uh, and on what, or what's out there, what's searched, you know, what, it, it, yeah break it all down and then create that content, if still relevant, because sometimes it may not be, uh, break it all down into um, kind of relevant content for your specific area. Um, but, you know, if your business is based there, if you're using your structured data, if you, you know, if you're pulling in, you know, if you're properly marking up GMB, et cetera, and things like that, then, um, you don't have to include, like, I don't know, wherever you may be in, in, in North Wales, you know, whatever whatever town. You don't need to include it into all your kind of content that you're creating. Um, naturally, on your homepage, you know, like, I don't know, I'm a, I'm a plumber in XYZ. But the content itself uh, doesn't necessarily need to revolve around that unless you're specifically talking about something in a location like, I don't know, uh, where do the main water mains run from? Um, because you would naturally just include that within the content. Um, so look at the main, you know, people's people's typical searching doesn't differ from from you know um, like Chester and Liverpool in that sense. If they're looking for a particular product or service, right? it doesn't necessarily differ. So look at the broader topic and then break it down into what, what you're working with. Unless, and I say again, unless it's absolutely specific to a street, a village, an area where, I don't know, you know, that's, the, yeah. Excellent, thanks, Tim. All right, so let's move on to um, number seven on our run list, Vesataki. Uh, do you even need to bother uh, optimizing an H1 tag um, is, is the question from Chris Green. Um, and Chris goes on to say, hey, guys, um, what is uh, search engine optimization best practice with H1 tag on e commerce homepages. Do you even need to bother optimizing it? Uh, um, Chris Green says. And Jonathan Bray says, absolutely. Do we want to add anything there? No, okay, let's um, go to our next. Number eight on our run list from Cheryl Daniels. Um, um, she said, I stopped doing SEO due to budget uh, constraints. Um, and Cheryl Daniels uh, asks, uh, hi, uh, if I stop doing uh, SEO, uh, um, due to budget constraints because the SEO, which I have been paying 
huge amounts uh, for many, many months is just too slow. Um, will I lose my current rankings and will they drop? Uh, I will start to do SEO again in a couple of months. Uh, well, I mean, you should, if you, if you stopped it, you should kind of still see a slight return on it from work being done. That being said, I don't know what they've done. Um, depending on how competitive the niche market is and the quality of work and the work done, um, I, like, I, I really don't think it'll make a difference if you take, uh, you know, four months off. Um, if it's a very competitive market and you haven't really started even um, hitting sort of page one yet, then it's not going to make a difference a year off or two years off or whatever. You're still on page two. Um, so, but it's not going to make a difference, you know, if you take four months off or six months off between pos position one and position 10, you're not going to like see that kind of radical uh, drop if you're, if you're already there. Uh, however, you might go from page one, position 10 onto page two in kind of six months, depending on how competitive the market is with people building on theirs, working on their sites, things like that. So it's a big depends, uh, depends on the market the site, what they've done. Thank you, Tim. Yeah. One thing that, um, sort of worried me about this is the vagueness of what the expectations were because i think that's the problem that cheryl has in that it's impossible to measure what has been achieved against what was promised or what really what cheryl thought was getting and i think i think though was an issue with that with the question of expectations what did they promise and how did they explain what they did or how they were doing yeah, and then the other thing too if if your view is that um, what you're paying um, in in comparison to um, um, the, the um, service that you're promoting, uh, um, and, and I would feel that if you say uh, um, um, you know if, if you're looking at that um, with concern, the chances are that um, you, 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 your feeling to be concerned is entirely justified. Um, anyway, uh, will we add anything more to this, guys? Okay. Number nine is from Andres Reddix. Uh, um, it's titled, Is it best to leave them or as is or, or hide them? Um, and then he says, uh, if a site has lots of posts that are already indexed, but protected by membership, um, is it best to leave them as is or hide them? Uh, thanks in advance. Um, so, well, Richard, obviously, um, you know, is asking the question there, but I'm going to go on um, face value here and just say, um, <laughs> assume that. Oh, the content okay, is so so there's so yeah, it's for members. It's for members only, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I see this quite often um, where they haven't actually realized how what they're doing but they have got a members area and a lot of it was indexed but then actually it's meant to be in the members area 
Yeah, just um, just depending on what you're using, but go ahead and like no index them. I mean, you can go as far as go into um, you know Search Console and request removal uh, because but the thing is, if you leave them and it pops up, um, it looks a little bit weird. Uh, I don't know. I mean, for me personally, if it's meant to be a members area, um, it's meant to be in the members area. However you've also got the flip side like for example if it was a newspaper you obviously want it indexed because people want to read it and then you get the bloody thing you know you know sign up and blah blah, blah to read more so it all depends on what it actually is um so like i don't know i know you're saying to purchase a membership but is that like is that content that's appearing in search results um is it is yeah yeah do you know what i mean you like is it oh i don't know like how I, I don't know if i'm explaining this but it all depends on what it is um um and could people get pissed off if they see it and then click through and go oh you know have to pay it's a paywall right like you do with newspapers it's 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 pretty you know pisses you off um i don't know depends what the content is but if you'd rather not have it displayed because um you know uh, like i'm guessing the bounce rate is quite high if somebody is searching like let's just say it's a gym and somebody searches something like um benefits of strength training we'll just say for example and they see them in search results and they go ah oh, yeah let me read that and then all of a sudden there's a thing with membership pop up um and then they look on the footer and like this gym is in london but i'm in scotland so it's like this no i'm not going to so i mean it really defined depends on what this is um yeah okay um let's uh, move on um I, I think if i click this um yes it is it's thank you for watching time we'll be back uh, next week uh, at uh, in the same place uh, to do this uh, all again um but for now uh, it's good night but we can't go without thanking uh, people like uh, um michael martinez brenda malone um Ammon johns um people who um, stump up uh, every day and, and answer questions so uh, admirably on uh, the WCA christians facebook group and of course, you guys, um, uh, Richard Hearn, uh, he couldn't be here uh, tonight. Uh, Richard Hearn, um, David Roseanne has a broken ankle. He can't be here. Um, so, um, but we uh, we and we had uh, Michael Fisher Kirshner uh, earlier, but we 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 still have uh, Masataki Wasa and, and Tim Kepper and. and uh, that I, I thank you very, very much. Anyway, let's um, click this button and uh, we'll be back next week um, to do it again.